Uh, before we go into the fun half, um, which we're probably just going to continue doing some of this stuff. Um, before uh, we left on vacation, one of the things that I was hoping would get uh, more attention was the maker of the manufacturer of the gun. And more than we have seen, I think, in the wake of any other um, mass shooting event, tragedy, massacre, carnage, whatever you want to call it, I, I feel like, you know, because I don't think that it was a particularly profound thought to think, and I've been saying this for a while, though, that we need to hold to account the individuals in these corporations who are promoting this stuff. You want to do this? You want to make your money by selling this weapon that has the ability or that provides the uh, perpetrators with the ability to wreak this type of horror on people, then you should proudly, you should be out there. You should be proud. And I would extend this to uh, not just to these mass killing events, but also every time a toddler kills themselves or kills somebody else by accident, blows their face off by accident because they got a hold of someone's gun. Because certainly the technology exists that you could prevent a toddler from being able to shoot a gun. Like I can prevent uh, my 12-year-old daughter from accessing my iPhone by putting a fingerprint thing in there. Certainly you could have that type of technology. Would it make the gun more expensive? Yeah. Sorry. Would it cut down in your sales? Yes. Sorry. But, I mean, if you're going to make a financial calculation as to, you know, whether or not toddlers are going to shoot themselves in the face every day or you're going to uh, sell this weapon that is going to wreak this type of uh, carnage and without, let me say, any societal benefit. You know, you can come back and you say cars also kill a lot of people, and that's true. But what is the uh, analogous benefit that society gets from these guns? There is none. It's not even close. And so if you're going to sell this um, basically death machine of choice, you should be um, celebrated as such. And here he is, James Debney. He is the CEO of what is known as America uh, Outdoor. What is it? America Outdoor. Because he used to be it Smith was, and Wesson. He was Smith and Wesson, right? Right. And now uh, they call themselves... Um, America, they've changed the name of uh, Smith & Wesson. American and Outdoor Brands. American Outdoor <laughs> Brands. Now, there's an interesting story as to why they changed the name to American Outdoor Brands. What is that? And that is because, one, they want to expand out of um, the gun business because without a black president, gun sales had stalled. Fear of the race war, apparently, uh, the fear uh, receded and the idea that you needed to shoot a deer with an AR-15 also receded simultaneously. What a surprise. But there's an interesting backstory. In 2000, Smith & Wesson, the waning days of the Clinton administration, made a deal to install safety locking devices in future handguns. They were going to devote 2% of their revenue to developing smart technology like the fingerprint thing. They also agreed not to produce guns that would accept magazines holding more than 10 rounds. They said that they would cut off dealers who are selling a disproportionate number of guns. They said that they would not put um, in civilian market large capacity magazines or semi-automatic uh, rifles. They weren't producing any at the time, so it was a pretty easy commitment to make. So they didn't have to pull it back, but they weren't going to go into that business. 
I was like, cucking, Weston. The, the assault weapon uh, ban was still in effect. But the point is, the fact that Smith & Wesson would make this type of agreement to say that we're going to voluntarily be proactive in our um, production of guns. And in return, what they would get would be increased liability protection. Because of that, the NRA announced a boycott of Smith & Wesson. And their sales dropped by 40%. Yep. So they were headed for bankruptcy. They apparently uh, reversed course. 2004, the assault weapon ban um, was allowed That's like to their competitors, basically, essentially, right? Like their other gun manufacturers uh, punishing them for course, getting out ahead, of right? Of course, of it's course. It's amazing that they would make that deal as a singular company, that they didn't have other people go in on with them. I wonder what the thinking was. Well, uh, maybe they were thinking like, maybe there's antitrust issues here. Maybe we shouldn't, uh, maybe there shouldn't be a, you know, I mean, uh, who knows? Um, but you got to also remember, 2001 happens, 9-11 happens at that point. You have the Bush administration, so you don't have any like sort of air cover, as it were. And well, the assault weapon ban expires in 2004. They start, uh, they get out of their deal. They don't need it anymore because um, our government passed a uh, law that uh, provided them liability protection anyways. The uh, the 12 people murdered in that Aurora, Colorado movie theater. Smith and Wesson assault rifle. Good for them. This thing can really take out a bunch of people and really in any environment. And Debney. Two months later. Told a gathering of investors, and this is coming from a uh, piece by uh, Michael Daly. I think this is in the Daily Beast. We get excited about uh, what we get excited about is that expanded user base and the level of social acceptance that we now see out there. Speaking about its weapons, it's socially acceptable to carry a firearm more so than before. To carry a firearm for protection, have one at home for protection, go to the range to shoot as a pastime, as a hobby. Kudos for him for not mentioning bringing it to, let's say, a movie theater or to a school uh, where you really want to kill people. But, um, this is the business, and this is the guy, David D uh, James Dempsey. And uh, he's made millions of dollars off of uh, producing these um, instruments uh, to kill teenagers and kids and uh, other human beings. Yeah, it's just everybody, actually. Yep. So kudos, buddy. I and hope. what was he formerly? He was the CEO of a, of a bin company, yep. like a Tupperware company. Yep. Wow. <clears throat> he was just, just headhunted to be the CEO. He had no previous background, and uh, he went right to it. This kid jumps into the pool. Thanks, Daddy. Right. He is a kid. I've had a lot of conversations with people in the past week or so about uh, what a socialist position on gun control might be. Um, but looking at people like this and companies like this, I think we can all agree that this is capitalism run amok. And uh, I might have more criticism of measures that target individuals, but on a corporate level, this guy is making tons of money off selling something that there is no reason anyone needs to be able to buy. It's a gun that exists purely to kill human beings. And I don't think it goes against socialist values to say, you know, we should go after them on the corporate level and the level of the people making millions of dollars off of this. Absolutely. And, and honestly, like if anybody has even one, even, I don't even think like wide, like even remote value to society, to the production of AR-15s. Uh, I would like to hear it. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you uh, live in a rural area and I know um, I know a couple of families who will shoot a deer uh, and that will be their meat for the winter. 
They will freeze it, and that will be their meat for the year. It'll take them through most of the year until maybe they raise a, a pig. It's a lot of that in October, and they get a mix of, of meat that way. Uh, I've known some people who shoot squirrels. You would not do any of that with an AR-15. You don't need to at all. I like how you went Obama with that. Did you notice that? Like, What's I know people who shoot squirrels. Squirrels. <laughs> you went up on it. No. <laughs> but I think I also but just... But my point is, is yeah, that... Yeah. And so someone could call in and say, well, you know, there are some families in the country who actually feed themselves through the, the use of their weapons. I mean, my family has freezers full of uh, meat that my dad has shot. But right. Yeah. Like, Murderer. Well, you, know, you know, I don't know. Maybe your family needs it. Or, I mean, and the, and the, the families no, that I know that's a, a supplement. Yeah. That's a supplement. Dad just enjoys but that's fine. animals. But, that's, uh, but, that's but, the, but so, and, and with that stipulation, what is the social benefit from an AR-15. But can I just add, I just think though that the, that the, the, the value, like I, I agree with you that there isn't a social benefit and it's very important to have that conversation. But I think that, yeah, there's sort of three things. There's like a defining what is a sort of, is there, there's room I think on the left for a debate about gun control and the role of guns in our society. And then I think there's getting away from I, I just think strategically focusing less on like the gun culture issue and people who own guns and more so on these companies and how abusive to the public they are is, is more effective. Oh, I, I agree. It's but I'm just more my, populist. I, I'm it's a, more populist. No, no, I know you're my point that's is not though, contradicting is that what you're it's saying. It's important to yeah. be able to address the question of yeah. of we corporations sell things that end up killing people that's and they right. use properly. Cars. But I think, you know, as much as there are uh, social detriments to cars, we need transportation that has a, some redeeming social value. Yeah, Medications well, just a, just will kill stupid, people, yeah. yes, uh, in certain instances. It has some redeeming social value. There is none for these guns. There is none. There's none. Well, that's, well, yeah. The right wing has taken it up as kind of a culture wars issue and convinced people that guns symbolize freedom and individualism and all this toxic American stuff. And while well, freedom's good, but, you know, in can't, my opinion, can't we can't we come up with like some type of uh, emoji that they could have instead for freedom? Maybe like a frat, like a picture of a flag. Everybody carry on a picture of a flag. All right, look, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we got a lot of stuff in the uh, fun half. Uh, just a reminder. Squirrels. This shit. Squirrels. Squirrels. <laughs> Don't boo. Squirrels. Boat. Don't boo boat. I feel like Red Wing Mandela would like shooting squirrels with an AR-15. <laughs> <laughs> that's just for his collection of squirrel tails, because yeah. that's all that would be left. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who, is the, who is the guy? What is it? No, Davy Crockett. My fucking Davy Crockett hat collection. <laughs> That's that's raccoons. <laughs> Coons, right? That's right, raccoons. Right. You're not and all that squ heads off. Squirrel hat. Throw a fucking not, squirrel hat on. Not really. Ah, whatever. Folks. What do you know, Joe? This program. <laughs> I, I actually. I know. Ah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know. Yeah, handy man magazine show. Sure. Whatever it is. Surprisingly sure. large yeah. amount about I'm raccoons. I'm sure too, you actually. do. I'm sure. Uh, people do. would be yes. very shocked. I'm sure. My, of, my, the depth of my knowledge about YouTube raccoons. Of course. Of course.